one of the things you hit on a little bit ago, Tom, was that you know, you're, you're a big storyteller. You, you tell lots of stories, and I've noticed that just in our, our interactions. If you think through your career journey from the executive career to the work that you're doing now, if you had to drill it down to say one or two key communication skills that have really helped lead to your success, what would you say those would be? So the reason storytelling is so important in my life um, is it, it so so everyone always talks about I want to make sure that I capture what you're saying listening active listening everybody um, the reason storytelling works from a neurological perspective is that stories stitch together data from both the right side and the left side of your brain so the right side is the abstract conceptual and the left side is where all the facts and figures are, are sort of residing. What story does, the story traverses those two things. I give you the abstract story, but then that story is sprinkled with facts and figures. And in, in, so pathologically, that actually ends up being something that's created in your brain. That connection literally gets built in your brain while you're putting that together. So if I want you to walk away from something that I've explained to you or talked to you or communicated with you, I want you to be able to retrieve it and, and, and reflect on it and heck, maybe ask questions later on about it. And so I'm very, very, so, so I get another prescription on why you use stories. So communication number one, storytelling, and I gave you some prescription and some context to be able to practice it. The other thing is there's, a, there's an aspect of conciseness that I don't think we've mastered. Mm -hmm. Why do I want a conciseness? Everyone always says concise is better, be close. Well, why is that? Well, again, I'm going to hearken back to the science that we now know. Our short-term memory is housed in something called the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is sitting there. And according to the research, it holds about 15 to 18 minutes worth of content. Think of it as like the memory of your computer. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't get flushed into the long term, it, it goes away. So a lot of people go, I'm going to have this two-hour meeting with the customer. Everyone's like, you're going to spend two hours with the customer. Oh, that's awesome. But remember, the last 15 minutes is the only thing they're going to walk out of there. So, yeah, have the conversation, do that. But somewhere along the line, look at the clock and <laughs> say, I got 15 minutes. Make sure that you are able to summarize, wrap up, get the clear points in their minds, so they walk out and go, yeah, that guy, Scott, he gets me. You know, like he, he, he hit the nail on the head. Could have said all sorts of really good things, supportive things, mm -hmm. detailed things, not saying that you shouldn't do those. But let me tell you, there, you know, if you're going to talk about golfing, <laughs> right, you know, in some interesting thing, they walk out and they'll say, Scott's a really good golf. Yeah. That's what I remember. So those are the sort of the two linchpin communication tools that I think, uh, and then of course we abstract them, right? So mm -hmm. this idea of, um, of, of limiting and, and conciseness of your, uh, of your uh, communication is important. Definitely. And I, it, it's kind of funny as you were talking about, you know, especially with the stories and creating the, the handles to pull the information back, just were, brought me back to college and you know, undergrad. I was, a, I was a teaching major. I taught high school for a number of years before going into a sales career and just remember the terms of this idea of scaffolding, trying to connect information together in the brain, as well as creating what they, they literally call them handles so that students can go back and, and access that information. And if I think of throughout my teaching career, when I had, I would say the most success or when things really felt like they were clicking, it wasn't when I was just standing in front of the class lecturing. It was when he was coming up with either stories or activities that really get the students to grasp those concepts was, wasn't just reading, wasn't just getting the facts, it was helping them internalize it or somehow relate to it, kind of creating relatability to information that can be complex, that can be boring for some people, helps them to remember. And I would run into students years later and they would bring up different activities or different things that we did just because it was so different and it used stories and it understood the psychology of the brain.